So Nissan has just said that they maybe want to survive this transition into electric cars, but it's definitely a maybe. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to have you here on the channel. Now, welcome to all the new subscribers that have come on board recently. It's been over 8,000 this week. Fantastic to have you here on the channel. Make sure you check out the 630 videos we've created over the last six months alone. A lot of content in those videos that you would probably want to know about if you want to know everything that's going on globally in the electric car transition to Nissan has woken up, smelt the roses, realized that, well, the world is going to electric even if they don't want it to, it's happening. Now, obviously, Japanese automakers have been very reluctant to transition to EVs and are very scared right now of what's going to happen with the new Chinese dominance in this sector. Now, while Nissan's plan is a step in the right direction, there's still some question marks here that I have. In fact, one key issue which is going to be a huge stumbling block for them. So what is that issue? First, Nissan has announced a new electrification plan intending to bring the company into the electric age with four new concepts. They're going to spend $17 billion over five years, quite a lot of money, but that includes investing in solar state batteries. And they're planning on having 15 fully electric vehicles by 2030. Now, Ambition 2030, as they call it, also includes targets for Nissan's future sales product portfolio. In the next five years, by 2026, Nissan wants to sell 75% electrified vehicles in Europe, 55% in Japan, and strangely, 40% in China. Now, China is one of the countries in the world that is transitioning to EVs faster than anywhere else. The likelihood that they're going to be able to sell that many petrol, diesel, whatever they are, gas-powered vehicles in China in 2026 is extremely low. Think about it. Last year, 6% of vehicles sold in China were electric. Last month, 18% were. Next year, it'll probably be more like 35%. By the time we get to 2026, I mean, let's be honest, most cars in China will be electric by then. So that, they're going to have to change. But other than that, I think they're planning on 75% electrified vehicles in Europe in 2026, 55% in Japan. Those two, are, well, they're pretty good. I think that that could work. I mean, obviously, Japan are a little bit uh, reticent to transfer to EVs because they know that it's going to destroy their own industry. But that said, I still think a lot of buyers won't want petrol, diesel cars, gas-powered cars in 2026 when they know an electric vehicle will cost the same to buy but last twice as long and cost way less to service. Running costs are so much less. I mean, in Japan, you don't need to travel huge distances, so you could probably get extremely affordable EVs in 2026. But anyway, at least Nissan is planning on investing. At least they're waking up, unlike other automakers like Honda, who are pretending to bury their heads in the sand, pretending nothing's happening. Now, the company's Ambition 2030 vision will see it bring 23 electrified models, including 15 new electric vehicles to market by fiscal year 2030, as well as introduce solid state batteries by fiscal year 2028. Honestly, I think that is a realistic time frame for solid state batteries. Over the next five years, it'll introduce 20 new models with electric or e-power powertrains. I personally think the whole idea of this 20 new models being introduced over the next five years, I think that's a bad strategy. I've said that about everyone. Everyone like Volkswagen saying they're going to have 70 new models. I personally think you need to do more of the Tesla strategy. I mean, okay, you can double Tesla's numbers. You can go from Tesla realistically only has about four models right now. They're going to have the Cybertruck, so that'll be five. Model A, that's going to be six. You know, that's six vehicles. And Tesla will be able to easily outsell Nissan in 2025. It's not even a question there with just those five models. So is it really necessary to have 20 models? I mean, I just think 20, just streamline it. You can massively reduce costs by having factories producing, say, eight models. That's all you need, maximum. But anyway, another key issue here that I see with Nissan's plans are they're saying they want to reach 40% electrified vehicles in the United States by 2030 and a 50% electrified mix globally by the same year. 
I would suspect, I would make a pretty good guess here, that if 50% of their vehicles are not electric in 2030, then they won't sell 50% of their vehicles. I think that's pretty straightforward, right? Why would anyone in 2030, nine years from now, when I mean, look at the decline in cost of batteries. They're declining cost by 89% over 10 years. They're going to continue to decline in cost. It doesn't matter what anyone tells you, that will happen without any doubt. And what's that going to mean? Well, battery electric vehicles will just be cheaper than gas. They'll be cheap. They're simpler. They're much simpler to make. You can do over there updates constantly. You don't have to bring cars in to fix them. You don't have to service them. You don't need new brakes. There's so many advantages of an electric car. By 2030 in nine years' time, everyone will have been educated on this. You'll be a fool to buy a petrol gas vehicle. There'll still be a couple of fools around, but that won't represent any more than a couple of percent of the market. Nowhere near 50%. Now, another issue here, in the context of what Nissan is saying, electrification does not only include all electric vehicles. It also includes hybrids like Nissan's e-power system. Nissan did not say what percentage of its electrified sales will still consist of gas mobiles or just dinosaur vehicles. I mean, they're just old school. Now, Nissan revealed four concept cars to demonstrate what's in its electric future, though it hasn't released much in the way of information on all of them. They just seem like they're pure concepts at this stage. The Chill Out Coupe crossover, the Nissan Leaf hatchback's apparent replacement, is the closest to reaching production, sharing its CMF EV platform and E-Force dual motor all-wheel drive system with the Aria. If you haven't seen my video on the Nissan Aria, I'll put a link in the description below. It's a pretty decent looking vehicle. I think it's a little bit overpriced, but it's a nice car. Now Nissan's saying that their so-called EV technology vision considers the direction of future EVs and how advancements in battery technology, hardware and packaging can offer customers a wide variety of mobility solutions. At its core are Nissan's upcoming proprietary all solid state batteries with concepts on this architecture featuring front and rear electric motors and advanced E-Force all-wheel drive and advanced ProPilot driver assist features. Now, the max out concept, which I mean looks pretty wacky and wild and I'm sure will never be made, is a so-called ultra lightweight convertible concept that promises a very low center of gravity limited body roll and superlative stability and comfort for those who will never drive it because it will never exist. But anyway, who knows? We'll see. Now, it's a two-seater though. Nissan says you can morph the seating. For example, the passenger seat can fold flat, just like in any other car. But anyway. Now, Nissan obviously is saying they expect some markets to take electrification more quickly. But I don't understand why they think China isn't one of those markets. I mean, are they not watching the Electric Viking? Come on, someone send them a video from the Electric Viking. How, who do I get in contact with to tell them to watch my videos? Anyway, by fiscal year 2026, Nissan expects electrified vehicles to account for more than 75% of its sales in Europe. And that, to me, is probably, probably the only logical statement that they've made here. That and investing money. So, hey. At least they didn't get it all wrong. That's a good start. Honestly, their solar state batteries, they're saying, yeah, what they're saying, mm, I'll tell you. The company says this new proprietary all solid state batteries, ASSB, will be produced at a pilot plant in Yokohama as early as fiscal year 2024, ahead of a market introduction in fiscal year 2028. Now, I'm not really connecting the dots here. They're saying they'll be produced in 2024, but they'll be introduced into the market in 2028. What are they going to do? Stall them for four years? I think that realistically they don't have any proprietary solid state batteries at this point. They might have a prototype, but not something that's going to go into production. We're a fair way away from that at this point. And Nissan is certainly nowhere near as close as the American company who are, well, the by far the closest in the industry of actually getting a product to market that is market ready. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about that company. Now, Nissan claims that these solid state batteries will reduce charge time to one third and bring the cost of battery packs down to $75 per kilowatt hour by fiscal year 2028 and down to $65 per kilowatt hour thereafter. Now, if this is actually true, if it is true that they'll be able to bring the cost down for their solid state batteries to $65 per kilowatt hour, then why on earth are they saying that anyone in the world would want to buy their petrol and diesel and gas cars? If you can buy a Nissan vehicle, that would, I mean, this would give 
100 US dollars is the, the point in which battery electric vehicles become cheaper than gas. So that means it's cheaper for Nissan by 2028 to produce a, a vehicle with solid state batteries that can charge incredibly quickly, right? And they're saying that people are just going to choose gas cars instead. And that doesn't add up to me. Now, if they have this magical technology that's going to enable them to reduce the cost to that, solid state batteries in their vehicles for $65 a kilowatt hour, I mean, that is just like dream level tech that no one in there, you'd be insane to want a gas car if you can buy an electric vehicle with solid state batteries for less money than a gas car. So this is where I'm not sure they've really thought through what they're saying. Now, Nissan is saying by employing cobalt-free battery technology that they expect to reduce the cost of its lithium-ion batteries by 65% by fiscal year 2028. Now, I think those two statements are not connecting. They're talking about, obviously, they're talking about NCA or NCM chemistry batteries there, which are not their solid-state batteries. So, yeah, the press release, to be honest, was hard to understand in terms of whether or not they're actually conflating two things together here. Now, at some unspecified time in the future, Nissan expects to achieve cost parity between EVs and petrol vehicles. In addition, working with partners is aiming to increase its global battery production capacity to 52 gigawatt hours by fiscal year 2026, and then more than double it to 130 gigawatt hours by fiscal year 2030. Now, obviously, if they're producing, if they have a production cap capacity of 52 gigawatt hours in 2026, they're going to be one of the, the smaller players in the industry. They're not planning really on being a big player. I honestly think the race will be won and done by 2026. So I think at that point, that will be Nissan's market, potentially the 52 gigawatt hours. I think they'll probably lose a significant amount of market share if that's all they can produce by then. They need at least 100 gigawatt hours by 2026 to really be competitive here. Now, in other news that they said, they're also investing in their pro pilot driver assist technology with the aim of expanding it to over 2.5 million Nissan and Infinity, and Infinity vehicles by fiscal year 2026. By fiscal year 2030, they aim to have next generation LiDAR systems for autonomous driving technology on virtually every new model. Now, right now in China, there is a company that is running more autonomous vehicle rides than Waymo is in America, significantly more, more than double in fact. So yeah, I think that this is sort of pie in the sky dreaming from, from Nissan. I think that that market will have been kind of taken by 2030. I know there's lots of companies hoping they can get a slice of that pie. It's extremely lucrative, but I don't think any of them are within earshot of having a chance at that. Now, additionally, in other, this is actually good news. Nissan is investing up to 20 billion yen or 246 million Australian dollars, around about 170 million US dollars in charging infrastructure by 2025. And it aims to fully commercialize its vehicle to everything and home battery systems in the mid-2020s. Now, Nissan's EV360 manufacturing strategy first rolled out at the company's Sunderland UK plant, where they've got a, a big sort of battery factory there and car factory, and comprising neighboring vehicle and battery plants, will also be rolled out in Japan, China, and the United States. So Nissan planned to build factories all over the world. Now, though it's investing heavily in electrification, spending, well, a shit ton of money, really. It's a lot of money, 17 billion US dollars. The company says it will say sustain its business over the long term, and it expects to maintain a consolidated operating profit margin of above 5%. I don't see how that's actually possible if they're going to be investing this much money over this period of time and transitioning to a new technology, competing with Chinese car companies. I don't. I think that's they're dreaming that they'll need to take a hit for a few years to be realistic about it, but. Anyway, I'm just telling you this if you want to be a shareholder of Nissan so you actually have some more realistic information than you're hearing from Nissan's marketing department. Now, this is one key thing that I do think is an advantage for Nissan. They say they'll find cost savings by working across the greater Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance and tapping into shared expertise in electrification, software, and services. Definitely, that is true. That is realistic, and I think that's a big advantage that Volkswagen have as well being able to use the same technology across a range of different brands, same batteries, same motors, same everything else, makes a lot of sense. Now, Nissan was an early leader in electrification with the LEAF. And as Electric says, this first hit the road in 2011, beating even the Tesla Model S to market. In fact, the LEAF was the best-selling electric vehicle in both the US and globally for several years until 
the Tesla Model 3 finally eclipsed it nine years later in 2020. But after the leaf, nothing really has happened at Nissan. Nissan showed a few concepts here and there, but other than the refreshed leaf, it hasn't done much new and electric. Now, finally, more than a decade after the leaf came out, the Aria is coming out soon. And Nissan's just started taking orders for that vehicle, but it's taken a hell of a long time to get here. Now, Nissan's commitments today were good. They're a step in the right direction. But the truth is, after waiting for a decade for them to really do anything to really kickstart their full electrification plans, it's hard to really believe them 100% until we see some definite action here. Now, for me personally, it has been a little bit disappointing to see Nissan kind of give away the lead they had on EVs from the start. If they had to continue to develop those vehicles back then, had to potentially work with, say, Chinese battery manufacturers to bring the costs down, had to work with some technology companies to improve the technology in their cars, the Leaf could have actually become a phenomenal vehicle. But it's sort of mocked for being a, having no thermal management in the battery and having high battery degradation and extremely low resale values. I mean, most electric cars hold their value extremely well, whereas the Leaf, it's it's a definite used car bargain because you can get them so, so cheap because perception of those vehicles is not particularly high. Now, to give you an example, here's a comment on electric from Nay to Gas. He said, with my 28 mile range, eight year old leaf, Nissan has left a bad taste in my mouth for their products. I don't really care for them. Is that going to be the state of Nissan's future with electric cars? I don't think so. I think they can improve their perception of their vehicles by, well, simply improving the product. But past experience over the last decade of seeing where they've gone with the Leaf doesn't give me particularly high hopes. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.